Hi, hello, how is thy? And welcome back to Last Minute Lit. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. A little bit of deets before we go into the book. Wuthering Heights was written in 1847 in England um, on the Moorish countryside. And what is the Moorish countryside, you may ask? It's, uh, it's a grassy plain field with a lot of rocks and it's always wet so they're kind of slippery and it's windy. The Bronte sisters grew up in this area. It's considered kind of a dangerous landscape, I guess, among the British folk. Another thing to note is that the book is set in the early 1800s when uh, things were changing. Um, Social classes were changing, um, you know, new money was emerging, and also um, diversity kind of came in. With colonization, there were few, very few, people of color emerging into the British population. So the book is set in 1801, where we meet a man named Mr. Lockwood, who is renting a beautiful manor named Thrushcross Grange in the British Moorside. Anyways, so he goes to meet his landlord, who lives about a mile away from him in um, the house called Wuthering Heights. And his landlord's name is Heathcliff. And he goes to visit him and it's pretty shit, actually. He gets, like, bitten by a dog and he meets, like, a young girl called Catherine and, like, she's mad rude to him and to Heathcliff also. And uh, he stays in one of the rooms there because he's, like, sick or it's, like, too cold or some shit. I don't remember. He, like, sees a ghost (laughs) out the window and uh, he grabs her wrist and he slices it across the window pane and it's bleeding. So he goes back to his rented home, Thrust Cross Grange, and the servant who works there, Nellie, um, he comes to her and he's like, why does Heathcliff live in this absolute shithole with ghosts in it and not the Thrust Cross Grange? And then we get into Nellie's um, story where it just... The majority of the narrative for Wuthering Heights is Nellie's uh, recollection of everything. Nellie remembers herself as a young girl working in Wuthering Heights. She worked as a servant for the Earnshaw family. The Earnshaw family consisted of Mr. Earnshaw, Mrs. Earnshaw, Catherine, and Hindley. Um, And Mr. Earnshaw decides one day he's going to go to town on a business trip. And instead of bringing back souvenirs... Um, that his kids wanted, he brought back a child. He brings back um, Heathcliff, this orphan child from London. So at first, all the kids hated him because they were like, I thought you were going to get me like candy, but okay, I'm sick, I guess. So they all hated him at first, Catherine and Hindley, but Catherine soon became best friends with Heathcliff and they would do everything together. But Hindley always didn't like Heathcliff because Mr. Earnshaw loved Heathcliff more than he did his own son, Hindley. So that grows some resentment. And when Mr. Earnshaw dies, he leaves, well, by law, this estate is left to the oldest son, which is Hindley. So Hindley is now in control of Wuthering Heights and he says, Ayo, Heathcliff, I fucking hate you. You're gonna be a servant now. But Catherine and Heathcliff are still friends and after he's like done, I don't know, plowing the grass or something, um, him and Catherine go to Thrust Cross Grange to go pick on the two little kids that live there, Isabel and Edgar. And then before they're gonna go piss them off, they're kind of like sneaking into the house or like looking through the window and they're like looking in. And inside the house is super lavish. While they're looking through the window, the family at the Thrushcross Grange, their dog gets loose and it bites Catherine's ankle. It kind of chews it up. So Catherine isn't able to walk. Catherine is taken in by the Lintons because they feel bad that, you know, their dog... (laughs) Ate the shit out of your leg. So five weeks later, Catherine comes back to Wuthering Heights to see her fam. And she's changed because she spent a lot of time at the Grange with the posh society. And she's not the same person and Heathcliff was kind of upset with her 
because she's more feminine, she's more a lady now. And also, she's into Edgar Linton. And we find out that Catherine, with a discussion with Nellie, is kind of only into Edgar Linton because he has education and money and kind of an opportunity out of Wuthering Heights for Catherine. And she wishes she could marry Heathcliff, but because of his social status, she knows that he's never going to be a viable option for her. And so Henley gets married at one point and his wife dies in childbirth, surprise, and his child is called Harriton. Henley becomes a mega asshole. At this point, Catherine is also now engaged to Edgar. Heathcliff runs away from the Moors. So he's just like, hey, fuck it. I'm out. I'm going back to London. I'm gonna figure some shit out, make my own money, by. Then a few years later, Heathcliff returns. He's like this mysteriously wealthy guy and he comes back for revenge. So at this point, when he comes back, Catherine is married to Edgar. Hindley is just a drunk and is so in debt. Once Hindley passes away, the estate's gonna go to him. Hindley does die, you know, because he is an alcoholic. Heathcliff inherits Wuthering Heights estate. At the same time, Heathcliff is also a wooing or charming Isabella, Edgar Linton's sister, as sort of a revenge onto Edgar for stealing Catherine from him. Heathcliff gets to marry Isabella and he gets her pregnant. But he's really, really abusive to her and really mean. So pregnant Isabella leaves the British Moor side and she goes to the city to go live with her extended family. And at the same time, Catherine, who's living in Thrushcrash Grange with Edgar Linton, is somehow pregnant. Um, she's been like sick the whole time. And then it just turns out that she's also pregnant. So she gives birth to a daughter, but she dies in childbirth. A surprise. And Heathcliff is pretty upset. Once Catherine dies, Heathcliff begs Catherine to continuously haunt him. And that's where we see the spiritual supernatural plot. It kind of explains why Woodlock uh, saw this woman ghost. It was dead Catherine. And Catherine's um, daughter is called Catherine, which is extremely confusing because the entire novel consists of doubles. Like, which Catherine are you? Hello. So 13 years pass now since Catherine's pass away. Nellie is relocated to Thrushcross Grange. She no longer works at Wuthering Heights to be the main caretaker for young Catherine. Young Catherine grew up with Edgar Linton, so she's very educated, very proper, and has manners and class and everything. But she's never left Thrushcross Grange, mainly due to her dad's fear of Heathcliff Cliff, but she's never told why. Kind of wanders off and she sees Wuthering Heights and she's interested so she goes there and she meets a boy named Hareton which is Hindley's son and they kind of play and then she comes back. During this period we find out that Isabella dies. Her son, Linton, are you kidding me, is gonna come to Wuthering Heights to stay with his father. Heathcliff. But Heathcliff wants revenge on everybody and everything and he treats his son like absolute shite. And Catherine, you know, comes back to Wuthering Heights another day to explore and she meets her cousin, Linton, who's a very sickly and frail kid. The most annoying character you'll ever meet, ever. And they kind of like like each other, you know, in a cousin incesty way. And so they start a secret romantic relationship that they you know, exchange letters to each other. And Nellie, the caretaker, finds out about this and she kind of rips them up and throws them in the fire. And she's like, nah, -uh. you don't know shit about this family. They fucking crazy. And she sneaks out at night to go meet up with Linton. We find out that Linton is part of a ploy to kind of get revenge on Edgar and young Catherine. Um, and he's pressuring his son to marry young Catherine. If she marries Linton, he would get full control of Thrushcross Grange because Edgar's only child is young Catherine. So Heathcliff keeps young Catherine as a hostage at Wuthering Heights and basically says, I'm gonna let you out if you agree to marry my son right now. And at the same time this is happening, her dad is very sick and he's about to die. So she kind of is in between, I have to say yes, because I need to go see my dad. And so she says yes, she becomes his wife. Her father dies. And a little while after, Linton dies. Her husband, child cousin husband, 
she's now under the control of uh, Heathcliff. And Heathcliff now owns Thrushcross Grange and Wuthering Heights. Now we're back into the present um, in 1801 where Mr. Lockwood is listening to all of this and he thinks that Heathcliff is an absolute mental case and he dips. But then he comes back and he goes to meet Nellie and he's like, oh my god, Nellie, how's it been? It's been a few months. How's Heathcliff and all that stuff? And Nellie's like, well, so when you've been gone, um, young Catherine and Hareton have fallen in love because Hareton was illiterate and Catherine taught him how to read. And Heathcliff has been haunted and obsessed with dead Catherine and he kind of just walked out into the moors one night and died. And so now young Catherine and Hareton have inherited Wuthering Heights and Thrustcross Grange and they kind of live happily ever after. And the story ends by Mr. Lockwood visiting Heathcliff and dead Catherine's grave. The first topic I want to talk about is social mobility. The idea of kind of moving between classes and marrying in between classes. We kind of see this uh, especially with young or dead Catherine I should say when she was a child. She wants to marry Heathcliff but she can't. So she marries Edgar Linton who's richer than her and higher than her because she's kind of just a country girl. She doesn't have that posh British society. But marrying Edgar Linton allows her to have that opportunity. But we also see that uh, the Linton family is kind of the embodiment of London posh society and they go from rich to poor. Well, to be rich to non-existent. The Linton last name no longer exists. And so the idea of moving in between classes, whether it's upwards or downwards, is a very worrisome thing back then and it is a very possible thing, uh, kind of a new idea to emerge. And it's very scary, especially for people with old money. And I want to look at the setting um, of Wuthering Heights versus Thrushcross Grange. Um, yes, they're in the Moorish countryside, but each house is described in its own um, way. Wuthering Heights um, is described by Mr. Lockwood as like a beaten down house, um, a lot of nature is on it and it's growing but it's kind of like scary nature and it's kind of like the roof has been shifted because of the wind and stuff. Idea of a countryside family um, being closer to nature than sort of a uh, social culture I guess or a British culture because it's a they had to survive in nature, therefore take on nature's culture, we'll say, right? We have Thrushcross Grange when Heathcliff and young dead Catherine um, went to go see it initially. And they talk about how the, like, how luxurious and lavish it is. And this, it's this idea of high society and um, the privileges of high society, you know? Catherine is invited in because she is a woman with the possibility of birthing a child. Um, while Heathcliff is rejected. She gets thrown into this house, which symbolizes the high, posh British society, and she's kind of bedridden the whole time. She's not allowed to go out and do anything, and it makes her sick. It's kind of this engulfing and surrounding of British high, posh culture, and it's suffocation and being overtaken by the patriarchy. That's my analysis. Take it with a grain of salt. You might not agree. It's okay. That's the end of Weathering heights. Please subscribe and catch you later. Bye!